Hello everybody, my name is Heather McLean and I'm an LPN here at Union House. Most of you probably know me. I'm here to describe a proposal that I have to try to better our facility and make sure that staff and residents stay as safe as possible. I'll be showing a PowerPoint and this PowerPoint is going to outline my idea. Some of the things that will be discussed are why this proposal is needed and I'll talk about what it entails and what the, what the budget is and then at the end there will be time for questions. As nurses, we all have the incredibly hard responsibility resting on our shoulders to keep these residents safe every day. Um, not only the residents, but us too. We've all had to work short staffed and we know how it is and we know how it can negatively affect patient care and outcomes. And this is why something needs to change. So the need for this proposal. In 2008, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services set forth a new regulation that will stop payment if a patient's condi condition was preventable or considered to be a never event. So a never event can be a fall, it can be a pressure ulcer, um, things that just should not happen in the nursing world to people. Um, there's studies that show that there's a correlation between low nurse staffing and poor patient outcomes. In studies reviewed by the National Institute for Health and Social Care Excellence, a company called um, NICE, abbreviated NICE, uh, demonstrates a link between low staffing levels and mortality, and seven of those studies show a link between low staff levels and fa failure to rescue. So um, patients who or residents who had symptoms that should have been followed through with more carefully um, so the patient could have had a different outcome. So nurses, when nurses fail to recognize these signs and symptoms, there's a poor outcome for the patient. There was also found that there was an increased prevalence of falls when nurses were short. So nursing retention, one of the major contributors to the nursing shortage is the not rising number of experienced RNs who are retiring. Um, and it's not just that the RNs are retiring, it's these experienced nurses aren't around to help educate the new nurses that are coming into the field. Um, one million RNs will retire by 2030 in that the departure of such a large cohort of experienced RNs means that patient care settings and other organizations that depend on RNs will face a significant loss of nursing knowledge and expertise that will be felt for years to come. And that comes directly from the American Association of Colleges of Nursing. So what can happen when nurses are so uh, staffed so poorly? There can be an increase in patient falls. There can be medication errors. There's physician and staff frustrations. There's staff injury and burnout. These are all things that are not going to benefit us or our residents. And then ethics come into play. When nurses are short staffed, they have little time to do tasks and they get burnt out. They don't have time to spend with the patients they really should to complete their assessments. Nurses are expected to follow a certain code of ethics. Two of these ethics, the nurse promotes, advocates for, and protects the rights, health, and safety for the patient. Another one, the nurse has authority, accountability, and responsibility for nursing practice, makes decisions, and takes action consistent with the obligation to promote health to provide optimal care. If nurses are working short-staffed, then these just aren't attainable. Um, when you don't have the time and you're trying to rush through tasks, you're breaking these code of ethics. So what's the solution? The solution is nursing incentives. So incentives such as continuing education, 50% tuition reimbursement with a year full-time contract, performance-based bonuses, $3 increase in salary at 5, 10, and 15 year intervals, a $5,000 sign-on bonus, career advancement opportunities and yearly raises, double pay for picking up shifts, flexible, flexible hours, and increased wages for experience. These are all things that would help us retain and recruit new nurses in our facility. And what would these incentives provide? Happy nurses and happy patients. So some of the benefits that would this, these incentives would create. The facility would recruit 10 new nurses in the three month period from May to August. Prevalence of patient injuries and events such as pressure ulcers will decrease by 
Nursing staff injuries reduced by 75%. Time required for use of nursing equipment is reduced. Nurses will pick up extra shifts. Therefore, the nursing shortage will be improved. So some other benefits. New equipment will ensure the safety of the staff and residents as well as reduce the time it takes to complete transfers and complete assessment. New grads will be eager to accept a position for tuition help. Older, more experienced nurses will stay at the facility longer, aiding in the education of new nurses. More experienced nurses at the facility need to teach these new grads. So the budget is going to include two new Hoyer lifts, two new sit-to-stands, five new hospital beds, a new vital tower, continuing education expenses, tuition reimbursement expenses, increase in wages for experience, sign-on bonuses, and bonuses for picking up shifts. In conclusion, the implementation of these incentives is going to improve the safety of nurses and residents as well as encourage recruitment and retention of new nurses. And is there any questions?